everyone, I'm Yingyi. I'm a first year psychology with education student from Hong Kong and I'm running to be your events director. So as a proud member of Abacus, I've got, had the pleasure of meeting and making um, lots of my close friends now with a diverse group of individuals through the events organized by Abacus in the past year. Um, I'm thrilled at the opportunity to bring new ideas to, to the table as well as collaborate with others on the committee to provide the best experiences possible for everyone. So I've had some experience in boarding school um, with event management, which has taught me um, skills for communicating with restaurants and venues, as well as managing ticket sales and event planning. One of these experiences was hosting a charity fashion show where I had to communicate with different year groups to gain participation of models, as well as organizing tickets and arrival. I was also a boarding prefect at school, which allowed me to interact with a lot of um, full boarders, many of which were international students just like us. So through being boarding prefect, I was able to organize events such as Chinese New Year dinners, as well as other events in boarding house such as movie nights. As your events director, I'm committed <coughs> to organizing events catered to the diverse interests of um, our members to allow everyone to meet new friends as well as feel included. One of the most memorable Abacus events for me was definitely the Freshers' Welcome in Hong Kong, as I was able to make a lot of the close friends that I have now. Um, and I would love to assist the committee next year in helping to ease Freshers into university life, as I know for me it was extremely daunting. If it had not been for the committee's um, efforts of grouping us together to play fun, albeit a little bit awkward, um, icebreakers at the welcome events, I would not have gotten to know so many um, people. For the first few clubbing events as well, I, would, I think it would be really helpful to um, find a place to host pre's together, for example in a hall, um, which would allow freshers to get to know each other a bit better before being packed into a sunny club. I would love to create an environment where everyone's ideas can be heard and be brought to life and um, as well as you know, maintaining the current events and making them the best experiences possible for everyone. Um, through this, I would like to work um, towards bringing the best clubbing experiences for everyone from the start to finish. So this would, including, this would, sorry, this would include the uh, broadcast of release uh, of the tickets um, on a wider scale, because let's be honest, we've all been on the ask page, like trying to refresh to see when the tickets drop so that we can have one and also ensuring a safe and fun clubbing experience to minimize accidents at events, and um, also ensuring the well, uh, welfare and well-being of everyone um, through collaborating with the venues, for example, um, the Astra Angela scheme or Angel Shots, um, or even possibly like Abacus merch, which are like drink covers so that we can um, reduce um, spiking. I would also love to bring the ABBA family's idea earlier into the year as I found it really helpful and I'm sure freshers and pre-existing members would like to build a good support network within the society. Um, as you can see, I'm recently injured, so I haven't been able to attend the latest Abacus events, but if I, I'm voted for events director, I'd love to work with the team to host events within our budget, of course. Um, that are more inclusive towards those that are maybe younger, like Anais at the start of the year, that aren't able to go clubbing and meet other people through those freshers' events, or people that aren't really party animals or sporty people. Some of my ideas include an international potluck, so we can get to know other ethnicities and cultures um, and learn more about the people from there, as well as more frequent picnics, um, definitely at the start of the year because English weather, of course. Um, and then um, possible food, food crawls within Chinatown or cooking classes for our favorite hometown dishes. In conclusion, I'm committed to maintaining and building on the welcoming and inclusive community that Abacus has uh, represented and shown to me. I would be honored to serve as your events director next year and thank you for considering me for this position. Through meeting some people through the freshers pages that they have on Instagram, where you can 
for people. Um, so I definitely would try and use that avenue to promote it. Or um, as an international student myself, like of course I'm from Hong Kong, but I've been in boarding school my whole time. And I've been able to reach a lot of other people that come from the same background as me because a lot of people from Hong Kong also go to boarding school in England. So um, I think having that network and being able to contact people from my old schools um, to try and improve the um, audience that, um, for as his events, especially the first one, would be really important. And then in terms of actually executing the event, um, if there are no other committee members, I will try my best to get my boyfriend to help me, <laughs> and also um, my yeah. other friend in Hong Kong to help me organize the event, because of course, like, <coughs> for one person, she will have to do drinks, have to um, do icebreakers, it's pretty awkward if one person's just telling you to do icebreakers. So definitely like trying to get everyone that I know from Hong Kong to try and help pitch in. And also asking other committee members, if they're not in Hong Kong, to organize Skype events, up, like Skype or Zoom, whatever, um, to ask for ideas so that I can get some help and support on how to execute this. Um, so for our event this year, we basically started with no money in our account, mm -hmm. but luckily two of our other members were from Hong Kong, and so the deposit was split between us three. So we paid that one money and then mm -hmm. used what we earned um, from other events to cover our costs. But if you were the only one in Hong Kong, how would you go about concerning um, all the financial costs you have, and like if you had zero money in your in, in that account to start off with? Um, so actually, before I started this year, I took a gap year, so I worked in Hong Kong, so I do have. I think sufficient funds in Hong Kong to, um, uh, to host this first event. Um, but of course, like let's say I had no money, um, I would ask my parents for a loan, obviously, and I would try and pay them back. Um, or I would try and ask other committee members to help subsidize, subsidize as well as like my own, so that I'm able to um, find. Uh, sorry, get enough money to. Uh, do this first event, and then of course I'll pay them back afterwards. I can pay them. And the second question is, what would you do if you collaborated with another activist committee um, from another uni where they were in charge of dealing with all financial costs, but found that they were charging you at a higher price than the original cost? For this, I definitely would um, discuss with my committee members first, just to try um, to confront them in a way that's the least inflammatory. And then once we come to a decision as to how to um, discuss with the other uh, advoc London Advocates Committee member, um, I will obviously speak to them and ask them, first of all, like, why there was the need to do this, because obviously we're all trying to work together to achieve the same goal, um, to like help everyone you know, find a really good environment and inclusive environment for everyone. So it's a bit strange that they would charge one uh, London University more than the other. And then um, I would see what their reasoning is, of course. If their um, universities, for example, smaller universities like Goldsmiths or SOAS, if, they're on, if they aren't able to um, pay for as much, then I do think it's understandable. But then I would also possibly ask them to subsidize it because it would not be incentivizing for UCL students to want to go to the event if they know that they're being charged more. Okay. Any questions? What do you think? Is, oh, sorry. What do you think is the usual procedure for uh, when, when you're organizing events? Like, what steps should I take? Um, I don't know the actual procedure now, but in my mind, obviously, we would come up with an idea, or if there's a pre-existing idea, and then we would have to. Um, talk about costs, I think that's a really important part because like, you can have a really big idea and you want to do so many things, but if you don't have the funds for it, like you'll just have to come out of our own pockets. And it's not that you know we're not willing, I'm sure all other uh, candidates are also willing to pay out of their own pockets. Sometimes it's like unreasonable. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, discussing with the treasurer to figure out the costs and what funds we have that are available. And then also looking at venues, trying to find the best venues, speaking to um, the different people that have the venues, I guess, um, to try to find the best deal, but also the one that's the safest and the best suited for um, our members and events. And then afterwards, um, it would be allocating the committees or individual roles um, as to, like, let's say, outreach, um, trying to get everyone to know. So, like, GenSec would make their posts, or um, the president would, like, try to uh, liaise with the venue 
Um, for me, it's definitely like I think from what I learned from Esther, it's definitely ticketing, which I've had a lot of experience in, especially like doing like raffle tickets or like for a fashion show. Like, um, so I know how hard it is sometimes to get tickets, uh, people to want to buy tickets, um, because like if there's no incentive, then people don't want to buy tickets. So for me, I definitely will focus on that aspect. Also, typically in Hong Kong, like for the freshest event, so we don't really collaborate with other teams and like bigger clubbing events. It's more internal, like a study style gathering. Mm -hmm. But also, our fresher turnout rate for the very first event is also relatively low. Yes. So I think this year we had like 120 people that were like completely new fresh, mm -hmm. not like including committee and all our other friends. And so, bear in mind that when you're starting with no money in account, I think doing events like uh, bars renting a whole bar we didn't really have the budget for that and um, so we, that's why we did a party room this year do you have any other ideas that you could do next year or? um specifically in hong kong yeah. for summer like the weather is pretty good so definitely i think a picnic would be really cute and i really like baking so i'd be really into like baking um desserts for everyone to try um also like possibly turning it into a potluck so if people are interested they can bring their own foods to the picnic um, and that will be really nice because it's an open space and everyone can get to know each other well um, without feeling too pressured. Um, at home I have lots of board games so I definitely bring some board games just in case anyone wants to just play. Um, another event would be like just a get together I guess like at a restaurant of course like I don't think it would be Atticus funded like people would have to pay for it themselves but um, there's no cost of living in Hong Kong as much as there is here like with increasing prices, so things are relatively cheap. Or even going to like a simple tante, like something like you know a whole meal is seven pounds. So it's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I really like your idea about picnic. I would definitely go next year. Um, so this is a harsh question, but if there's only one VIP ticket left and you have to give it either to your ex con or your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I would not give it to my boyfriend because that's his own problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I definitely like respect XCOM a lot because like from my experience this year, I've had a really good experience even though like, you know, I've hurt my like the previous experience and also like GLB, my Adam one, which has been really, really kind to me. So I do appreciate the efforts that you guys have gone through. And then if he wants a VIP ticket, he can source it himself. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in addition to that, I'm running for LSE's Abacus events director as well, so I can get my own. Okay. Uh, second of all, the <laughs> yeah. question is... Don't worry, it's called has our own tickets, so I'll just okay. put it on spot. <laughs> um, how do you plan to figure out the demand for um, like internal events or smaller events like picnics and stuff, like not clubbing events? Like, How do you figure out whether people actually want to do these things? So I definitely think uh, Kelly is it, right? Yeah. I think her idea of um, Instagram polls was a really good idea, or going um, in through WhatsApp chats. I know that before going to the actual Freshers event, there was a Freshers chat in Hong Kong as well. So I definitely would work very closely with the general sec to try and find um, events that would cater to the members' uh, wants. Because obviously, there's no point in us like paying a bunch for a venue that no one wants to go to, and then we're just losing out money. Like the idea is to make profit so that we can host better events and more events for our members. Thank you. Oh, oh wait, I have a question. Okay. Um, so one of the problems we did face at the beginning of this year um, is that we pretty much started completely from scratch. Um, the committee next year won't have this problem because we organized everything very well. But, um, but yeah, so you're starting a new year as a con member and you don't have any of the contacts or any of the details from the previous year um, and this means that it's a lot harder for you to organize events because you don't know the venues you don't know the numbers you don't know the emails so what would you do to try to overcome this obstacle um. If I wasn't able to contact any XCOM, obviously, for this, I would um, try to source it out by myself. So I would do my own research. Um, to be honest, my degree right now doesn't take as much time as other degrees, like you know, medicine or something. So um, I do think I have quite a lot of time to um, 
spend and put all my efforts into being an advocates member um, and committee member, sorry. Um, but in terms of uh, like mailing lists or like trying to get um, you know reach to other people, I definitely think that a really important part is the fair at the beginning where there was like all of these societies. Um, and I definitely like got to know a lot more clubs through that um, fair. So I definitely would want to um, promote our uh, club and society in that fair by like perhaps like obviously subsidized by myself because we don't have any funds um, like snacks or something or like people like boba, people like snacks. So um, I think it would be good to um, try and gain some reach for that. And then of course uh, I also mentioned I think gaining a wider reach for um, ticket releases and stuff like that. And I definitely think in terms of this as well, having like a mailing list so people can sign up or even for tickets, um, people like can choose to join a mailing list and then they would like be notified before tickets are actually going live so that maybe they're ready to like get tickets or something like that. Yeah. What's your favorite internal event and what would you do to approve it? <laughs> um, it's not necessarily an event, but I do really appreciate like the Abacus family um, yeah, Gia has been a really good <laughs> Um Yeah, and I've gotten to know um, people that I wouldn't have met originally because we're from like different friend circles or whatever um, through this ABBA family like initiative a lot more. Um, and we had similar things in school, which has gotten us, like, which has allowed me to um, feel more comfortable in my place here because I have someone that I can always go to to ask for um, information if I do need it, and also. Um, like let's say I have ABBA children too, I would feel, um, it, I think it's really rewarding to help um, other people as well. So yeah. Yeah. Love Very honest you. answer. Love it. Um, and you, you just mentioned that you would try to host a free that accommodation hall, but in your second year you won't have access to the hall. So I was wondering like, what were your like ideas for the logistical aspect of doing that? Um, yeah, so I personally wouldn't have a hall, but um, a lot of freshers do end up living in a hall. So um, we would obviously try and reach out to freshers or try and find a hall that like a lot of people have access to. So for example, gardens, like which is where we stay, um, you're able to like go to the canteen area and just like drink before <laughs> going to events, um, which is uh, like quite a big space as well and you don't have to book it out or anything. And in the case that there are actually other people in that event, like in that venue already, you just get to know more people, which is really good. Jane, last one. <laughs> How many internal events per month should that be? In, like, including sports. And, oh no. No, not Like picnics, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I think at the beginning, there definitely should be like quite a couple, like the first term at least, like maybe two a month. Um, but nearing like, like the second term and stuff, maybe like, one a month so that people can still get to know um, other people that they may not have met before, but um, while also like you know not having to spend lots of money on like advocates events, and also um, people get busier as well. So I don't think the demand for that would be as high. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.